we're going to come up with a theory, okay? It's not my theory, it's a, a scientist theory about how they believe that North American people came to be on this continent. Now, everybody knows the theory of Pangea, right? Pangea once was one large landmass, okay? And over time, with tectonic plates and the movement of those plates, this, this big landmass broke apart. And the continents drifted, and they're still drifting on these plates, these tectonic plates. And supposedly they're getting further apart, they're getting closer together, depending on which continent you're talking about, due to the tectonic plates that are underneath the Earth's crust, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. You should have talked about that last year, I believe, tectonic plates. Yeah. In science class last year, or with Miss Williams or Miss uh, yeah. Hill. Okay, now, this is a theory. This is what scientists believe logically happened so that people can come from Asia, because there were people in Asia, to North, North America, and South America. Okay? This is their logical thinking. Okay? About 12,000 years ago, there was an ice age that occurred. During this ice age, the ocean levels or the oceans froze at the North and South Pole. The oceans froze at the North and South Pole. And when they froze, land appeared because the ocean waters went down. But underneath the ocean is land. Everybody understand that there is land underneath the ocean. Okay? The theory is, is that the ocean levels went so far down that the continents of Asia in North America were connected right here. That's the theory. That, that during that ice age, the North and the South Pole froze. And when that happened, the ocean levels went down. And then you could walk from Asia to North America on land. It's called a land bridge theory. It's called the land bridge theory. Now, they call this land bridge Beringia. Okay, they named this land bridge Beringia. Now, Beringia is located, this land bridge is located on what today we call the Bering Strait. Now, look at the first letters of Beringia. Okay, the first letters of Beringia are Bering. Okay, that's where they believe the land bridge was, where the Bering Strait is today. Okay, this is a theory. Okay, now the theory is, and I always like to do these little diagrams to show you guys. This is today. This is called Siberia, and it's part of Russia. Okay, and then of course this is Alaska, which is part of the United States. Alaska's right here, right? And this up here is Siberia. Okay, supposedly Asia. North America, where Alaska is and where Siberia is, was connected when the, when the Ice Age happened. Now, why would men go across this? Well, they were hunters. Okay? So I'm going to draw my little man here with his spear. Okay? My little hunter man. Okay? Little hunter man is following. Uh, no, don't start. Don't start guessing what I'm drawing, please. It's a mountain. It's a Little little hunter man. Stop. Little hunter man was following prehistoric animals like my, uh, woolly mammoths, saber tooth tigers. Those type of animals could survive in the cold. You understand? So these men are following these animals. These animals are going to go across this land bridge. And the hunters are going to follow them. Now, over the next 500 years, scientists believe during the Ice Age, over the, over the next 500 years, that these people move across, migrate across North America 
and eventually into South America. That's what they believe. They believed over a 500 year period that these people, these Asian hunters, will eventually migrate all the way down into South America. Now that's the theory. They, that's how they believe people came to be here. And they base that theory off of artifacts and people's remains that they have found. They have found old bones and, and pottery and different things, tools from people, and they base that theory off where they found these things. Okay, now that's one theory. Everybody understand that's a theory. And that's a widely accepted theory. Now you need to understand something, and a lot of people believe that's how this happened. But there's a problem with the theory. They found stuff that's older, older than 12,000 years in the Americas. Now, how did that stuff get here? If the people got here, 12, the earliest the people could have got here was 12,000 years ago during the Ice Age. How can stuff be, let's say, 17,000 years old or 18,000 years old? How did those people get here 5,000 to seven? Well, seven, no, let's see. Two to, two to seven would be five, two to eight would be uh, 6,000. So, how did people get here five, six thousand years earlier? If they didn't come on land bridge. Well, we don't know. See, this this thing, we don't know. There's theories about how those people got here. Okay. So, anyway, that's the theory, okay? Does everybody understand the land bridge theory? And, and we call that Beringia. The land bridge is called Beringia. Asian hunters. And another way, and another thing that they logically said is that the Arctic Indians, like the Inuits, they live up here in the Arctic, up here. Is that right? They live up here. Those Indians live up here. That's the purple on the bulletin board back there. Does everybody see? That's where the Arctic Indians are. Okay, those Indians have facial features, facial features, eyes, and skin color, and all that, that resemble Asians. Okay, so they've logically said, well, why do they resemble Asians? Because maybe they were descendants of the Asian hunters who crossed the land bridge. Does that make sense to you guys? Uh, that, that's just logical thinking. Do you understand logical thinking? Just like if you see somebody's kid next to them and they look a lot like them, you would assume that probably their kid. Right? I don't know why everybody's, what everybody's doing, we should be listening. Not, not drawings, but colors, but whatever. All right. So that's the land bridge theory. Now we're going to talk about uh, this article. Well, first we're going to talk about some archaeology. All right, so let's pull up some archaeology here. Let's talk about it. All right, now, archaeology. Scientists are not on agreement about when and how life began in the Western Hemisphere. I'm talking about North and South America, that's Western Hemisphere. Okay, the crossing of the land bridge through the last ice age is supposedly the most logical theory that they have come up with. They are constantly looking for new evidence on how to prove or disprove this theory. That's what scientists do. Scientists try to either prove their theory or disprove the theory. Okay, and that way to come up with their own theory and disprove somebody else's theory, it's constantly being done in science. It's Okay, Mr. Clinton likes to talk about how he's a scientist and how he tries new things all the time to see what works and what doesn't work. Okay, same thing here. This is the theory they think happened. Okay. Now, archaeology, the definition. Archaeology is the recovery of material evidence remaining from the past. Has anybody ever watched Indiana Jones? Yeah. 
No. No. Okay. It's a good movie. I, I, I would like you to watch it sometime if you get a chance. I'm telling you, that's preparing, of course. But it's a good movie, and it's about a person who is an archaeologist who studies archaeology, which is stuff from the past, the recovery of material evidence from the past. These people go on uh, what they call digs. They go around the world and they dig up old stuff and they study it based off the cultures and things of the past. Okay, you may have heard of an archaeologist. That's what archaeologists do. Now, a paleontologist, what do they study? Dinosaur bones, old dinosaur remains, right? Okay, well, an archaeologist studies cultures of the past, people of the past. Does everybody understand that? Okay. <coughs> huh? A paleontologist is different than an archaeologist. Paleontologist studies dinosaurs. Pretty much. For life during the dinosaur time. Alright. Okay, an archaeologist is a person who studies human behavior and cultures of the past through the recovery and analysis of artifacts. Artifacts are, we'll talk about the definition of an artifact in a minute, but artifacts basically are things that people have used in the past, uh, and they could be the remains of humans. It could be the remains of humans, it could be the remains of what they hunted, it could be the remains of what they used to cook with, it could be tools. But it's uh, things from the past. Okay? Now, here's where we're going to get into a conflict with the land bridge theory. Cactus Hill, an archaeological site located on the Nottoway River in southeastern Virginia. This is near Richmond. Okay? Richmond is the capital of your state. Are you paying attention to what you have? And, I want, and you have you should have that binder open to this these notes right now. Because we're going to be reading that article in just a minute. That a time article on uh, Capri Seal, we're going to be reading it in just a minute. Now, why they call it Capri Seal, I have no idea. It's not like it's in a desert and there's much cactus there and it's on a hill. So, whatever for whatever reason, they call this area Capri Seal. Again, I don't understand why they call it that. But the deal. Wow. Really? Yes, they should have called it tree deal, I guess. But anyway, but they did. They called it cactus. All right. Now you can see in the background, this is a picture of where they're digging. Okay. In the background, you can see some piles of dirt, and you can see uh, there's a, a tarp with some sticks, poles holding up over a tarp. Probably to keep the rain. Of whatever it is they're digging back then. Okay? Now, archaeological sites, they have to dig very slowly. The reason they have to dig very slowly, they have to use small tools and they have to dig slowly because they can break things. You have to dig slowly, you have to dig around things, and you have to make sure you don't destroy something. You know, if you brought a big backhoe in there, just started digging with heavy equipment. Well, if there was stuff in there, it's going to it's going to separate. If they dig it by hand, okay, they go section by section. Sometimes at an archaeological dig, they put grids out in strings. You know what a grid is? Yes. Everybody understand what a grid is? A grid looks like this. This is a grid. Okay. They put grids out in strings so that they know the exact location. Well, that came from that grid. Well, that came from that grid, and that came from that grid. And they tried to figure out exactly where stuff was at during that time. Okay? Maybe it was from a, a campsite, and certain things were in that campsite, like tools and pieces of pottery and things like that that they found. Okay? What they do is they record where they found everything. The location. You know, y'all know uh, GPS, right? GPS has coordinates. Coordinates are an exact location on the earth. Okay? They're going to put 
the GPS coordinates of exactly where they found that. Okay. Now, GPS coordinates can get up to, I think, like 10 digits. And that gets you within like uh, three feet of something. Okay? On the Earth. And so they know exactly where on the Earth they found that. And they write that stuff down and they record it where they found it. And they go very, very slow. Like I said, they'll dig a little bit. And then they'll... Throw that dirt away. If they don't find anything, they throw that dirt to the side. They'll dig a little bit more. They find something. They, they they put where they found it, and then they put it in a bag and they and they collect it. They collect what they find. Okay. Now I wrote on this, so I'm gonna have to do this by hand. Y'all remember this was tedious. Let me do this. All right. Archaeologists have discovered evidence that humans lived in Cactus Hill as early as 18,000 years ago. They say the stuff they found there is 18,000 years old. Well, how can that be, Mr. Renfro? There wasn't anybody here then. Scientists believe that it was 12,000 years ago when people actually crossed that land bridge and came to the New World. So how did they get here uh, 6,000 years before that? Now they get here. How's this stuff here? Well, we, we really don't know. We'll talk about it in a minute, but we really don't know. Cactus Hill is one of the oldest archaeological sites in North America. Actually, you could say in the in this hemisphere, in the Western Hemisphere, in the North and South America. All right. What's an artifact? An artifact is a handmade object as a tool. Or the remains of one, a shard of pottery, or a piece of, that's a piece of pottery, like a broken piece of pottery, a shard. Uh, characteristics of an earlier time or cultural stage, especially such as an object found on an archaeological excavation. Now, I want to show you some artifacts. Now, when you look at these, and you're probably like me, a lot of you are going to say, well, this looks like a rock. Some of them could be arrowheads, and some of them could be tools. But you and I, especially this one right here, this uh, this one in the left-hand corner here, right above the pencil, okay? That just looks like a rock to me, okay? But these are supposedly tools and things that people used 18,000 years ago. And they say, they've dug these up, and they say that these tools are 18,000 years old. Now, they do that by a special way of dating. They have a special thing called carbon dating. And there may be other instruments that they use, too, to determine how old things are. Because everything on Earth has carbon in it. And evidently, the older it is, the more carbon it loses over time. That's supposedly how it happens. Okay? And they do this carbon dating, and they try to figure out exactly how old things are. Gabriel, you wait here. My slideshow's on the roof. There. All right. Here's some more artifacts. Now I can tell that's an arrowhead. The one on the left there, and then the one on the right. And the one above it kind of looks like a rock. But anyway, archaeologists are trained. And know what you're looking at, guys. I, you know, you and I are not trained archaeologists. These people have studied uh, weapons and things in the past to know what they're looking at. <coughs> I'm not going to tell you again. Get your head up. <coughs> Try to get your head up. Guys, we're not going to sleep in here. Forget that. Hunter, get up. Now, there are three types of resources that Native Americans use. Okay? Because these are, these are all from Native Americans. These are all remains of Native American civilization, right? What are the three types of resources? One is a natural resource. Natural resource is what you find in nature. You go out here and you look on the hill, there's trees. They're naturally there. Nobody put them there, they're just naturally there. Okay? You go out in the woods and you see a deer. Well, that deer is just naturally there. You didn't put it there. Okay? It's just naturally there. Okay? Uh, that mountain is naturally there. 
You didn't put it there. You didn't say it. Okay. So that's a natural resource. Does everybody understand what a natural resource is? Natural resource is just it's there. It was made and it's there. If you don't want to listen to me, that's fine. I'll just send you downstairs. <coughs> I'm sure your mom would really like that. And I can tell you you're not listening to me. You're doing the opposite of what I'm telling you to do. Now you're not now, but were you doing what I told you to do? Okay? You guys look at me like I've lost my brain. Well, I lost my brain. I think you've lost y'all's. Because I asked you to do something that I don't want you to do. These, I don't want you to ignore me. All right. Uh, let's talk about a human resource. A human resource, there has to be a human being involved doing something. That's called a human resource. Okay? Somebody cut down a tree. Well, the person cut down the tree is a human resource. Somebody building a house. Somebody building the house is a human resource. Somebody out there hunting with a bow and arrow. The hunter is a human resource. Does everybody understand what a human resource is? It involves people. It has to have humans in it. Natural resources don't have humans in it. Natural resources are other things found in humans' environments that are naturally there. <coughs> okay? Now, the last thing is a capital resource. Now, a capital resource is something made by the human from nature. For example, a canoe. Well, a canoe started out as a natural resource, a tree, a big tree. We're we'll talking about a cedar canoe, okay? Big cedar canoe started out as a cedar tree, okay? Then a human being carved it. The human being carving it is a human resource, right? Yeah. The canoe at the end that could be used or traded to other people is a capital resource. Okay, one more example. A raccoon out here in the woods is a natural resource. The Indian hunter with his bow and arrow or his gun, if he has a gun later on, he has a bow and arrow. He shoots the raccoon. He's a human resource. The raccoon is then skinned and made into a cat. The raccoon skin cat is a capital resource. Okay? So does everybody see how that works? That, that Indians had natural resources, human resources, and capital resources. All the tools they made are what kind? They're capital. Do you understand that? All the tools or houses they made. Capital. Okay? Because, you know, a TP is just not naturally found out in nature. So a TP cannot be a natural resource. You're not going to go outside and say, okay? Water. But is a TP made from natural resources? Yeah. Yes, it is. Now, the person making the TP is a human, human resource. So, does everybody understand the difference between those three kinds of resources? Yes. Okay. Now, we're going to read this article on Cactus Hill. Okay, that'll be the last thing we do in here. And then if we have time left over, you all can uh, work on things for other classes, or you can work on SOL class, whatever. All right? But anyway, we're going to uh, try to get... Just pulled up. These are the slides show. All right. I'm going to go to Google Classroom and pull up that article. Okay. I'm going to read this article. Uh, I'm going to read uh, most of it, and I'm going to have some of you all read part of it. Okay. And I'm going to read most of it at the same time. All right. So, everybody at home, you, you would have to read this yourself. Uh, as we read it, okay? All right. So is everybody on page 13 in your notes? Everybody should be on page 13 in your notes. 
New Ways to the New World. <coughs> An old Virginia sandpit may change our view <coughs> of the earliest Americans. It has been called the greatest story of immigration to the Americans. At the end of the last ice age, brave women and men from Siberia walked across the Bering Sea land bridge for India. This is a piece of land that once connected the Asian continent to North America. Within 500 years, their descendants, people, their children, and their children's children, and their children's children, uh, had settled most of the hemisphere, meaning the Western Hemisphere, from the Arctic Circle down to the tip of South America. Okay? But it seems they may not have been here first. Okay, Cactus Hill. Well-known archaeologist Joseph McAvoy and his team reported that they have located an ancient campsite that is about 18,000 years old. The place, known as Cactus Hill, is about 45 miles south of Richmond. And there is a map on the next page. Okay. You want to see the map. Uh, it just has a dot on it. That's not a very good map. But anyway... <laughs> it's about 45 miles, uh, 40, excuse me, 40 miles from Richmond. 45 miles, sorry. Uh, scientists now believe that the site may actually be thousands of years older than the land bridge. Hmm. Imagine that. Okay, if that's true, then people were living in North America much earlier than once believed. If the dates hold up, and I think they will, said archaeologist Dennis Stanford. This is probably some of the oldest, oldest material in North America, if not the entire New World. For decades, experts thought that 11,200 year old stone spears found in Clovis, New Mexico, were the earliest evidence of settlement in the hemisphere. Now, I want you to think about that. If they came over in 12,000 years ago, that makes sense that there would be stuff there that's 11,000 years old, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. But in 1970, older sites have been discovered on both sides of North America. The most important finding has been a 17,000-year-old rock shelter in Meadowcroft, Pennsylvania. So they found stuff in Pennsylvania that they believe is 17,000 years old. Okay. So that means 5,000 years before the what? Before the land bridge. Everybody understand that's 5,000 years? If it's 17,000 years old, that means it's 5,000 years older than the land bridge. More proof. Now Cactus Hill presents more proof that humans settled in North America earlier than anyone had thought. McAvoy's team had unearthed a variety of stone tools probably used for hunting and butchering animals. The team also found burned bones of mud turtles, white-tailed deer, and other mammals and bits of charcoal left over from hunters cooking the animals. High-tech instruments were used to figure out how old the bones and the objects are. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter's chief archaeologist James Adavasio says, this is another indication that people were running around North America earlier than 13,000 years ago. Okay, so everybody turn the page. Come back. All right. Who like to read How Did People Arrive? Logan, read How Did People Arrive? Let's read down to the quote. Read the first paragraph there, down to the quote. How could they have reached North America? One possibility is that they came up on the eastern and western coasts of America. Uh, a 1,200,000, like a 12,500 year old settlement. Year old settlement in Montana, Florida. Now those Spanish words, Monteverde, Chile. You say Monteverde. Chile, for example, might have been reached easily by water. Okay. That's possible, says Jake Dottavasio. You have Southeast, you have Southeast Asians selling to Australia more than 50,000 years ago. Okay, who would like to read the next paragraph? The most startling idea. Mason, read that. <coughs> The most startling idea is raised by Dennis uh, Stanford, who says 
The cactus hill tombs resemble even older ones found in Spain and France. He thinks that the first people to reach the Americas managed to cross the Atlantic from what is now Spain and Portugal. Portugal from some seventeen to eighteen thousand years ago. From now, few scientists are willing to go so far. I think people did not have the capability. Did have the capacity. Did have the capacity to sell also like it says. All right, I'll, I'll finish reading. But I still think 99.9% .9 of the settling of America has occurred to the interior or along the coast of the Bering Sea. All right, so everybody look up here. This is what they think. Okay. Did everybody, does everybody see that uh, the red is the land bridge theory? The red arrows up here are the land bridge theory. Okay. Now the blue, the blue arrow is where they think people could have taken a boat and crossed Asia and then went along the coast of North America on this side, or they went from uh, Iceland or Greenland and went down the coast of uh, North America on the right side. They think maybe that's how people got here. Maybe they came by a smaller boat because it's not that long. It's not as far, guys. If I get you hit up, some of y'all are closing your eyes. You can hit Mr. Johnson, that doesn't exclude you. It's not that far. I showed you how far it was from Siberia to Alaska. It's not very far, is it? If you look on the world map, it's not that far. It's possible that somebody could have used a smaller boat and sailed across there and then ended up on this continent. It's possible. And then sail down the coast. Now, why would they sail down the coast? Because you want to keep sight of land, right? If you get out too far, you're not going to see land anymore. So they could have sailed down the uh, coast there and ended up down here in Chile. Does everybody see there's a, there's a place down here called Chile? Chile is how you say it in Spanish. Okay? Monte Verde, Chile. Okay, they found stuff down there that's 12,500 years old. Does everybody see how old that stuff is? They found stuff in uh, Peru, 12,000 years old. They found stuff in uh, Topper, South Carolina, that's 12,000 years old. They found stuff in Metal Crawl, Pennsylvania, that's 17,000 years old. Columbus, New Mexico, 11,200 years old. And then finally, Cactus Hill. They believe that stuff is about 18,000 years old. So they found stuff in other places. Now this usually happens by accident. Do you understand that? And some of these discoveries happen by accident. Somebody's building a house or somebody's building a business or something like that. And they happen to dig down and they run into some bones. Well, by law, you should have that checked out, right? You should have the authorities come in and check that out because you don't know if they're human bones or if they're animal bones or what they are. So you should have somebody come in and check it out because you don't want to be digging somewhere where there's a bunch of dead human beings that somebody maybe murdered or something. You know, you don't know. So you call the authorities, they bring in experts, and these experts come in and determine how old those things are. Well, when they're really old, they call in these specialists, these archaeologists. These archaeologists come in. And they start digging on that land, and it pretty much holds up whatever digging you're going to do or building you're going to do, because that's historically something that has to be done to preserve some history. You understand how that could stop your house from being people? That would be annoying. That would be very. It would be very annoying. Now maybe the government will pay you to live somewhere else until they finish digging, uh, or they may not. Uh, but anyway, uh, that would be annoying, wouldn't it? To, to have your house uh, being stop being built. But anyway, um, that's these things happen usually by accident. The the some of the tombs they found in England or in Egypt, they were digging around in certain spots and just happened to find stuff. Okay, and then archaeologists come in and they find out that this was some great 
Pharaoh or king of Egypt years before. And they dig up and they find all this stuff. There's all these artifacts. Okay? Uh, it'd be kind of cool to be an archaeologist. Right? It would. But it would also be frustrating a little bit because just like these people, they don't know for sure how these people got here. They know how old this stuff is or about how old it is, but they don't know how it got here. So that's a little frustrating to try to figure out. Now, once the guy said he thought it looked like stuff that the French and the Spanish had used, right? Now, that theory is, is that these people had boats good enough to cross. Let's say this is Europe over here, right? This is Europe. I'm just making it up. That doesn't look like anything like Europe. I understand that. Okay. But anyway, their theory is, is that their boats were good enough that, you know, 18,000 years ago, they could sail across that big Atlantic Ocean. We just don't have proof of that. Okay, that's what this one guy says he believes yes. could have happened. Now, again, this is a theory. Do they know what happened? No, no. No, they're it's unsure of what happened. It was older than yeah. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. I almost went the whole time. Anyway, so I'll stop there. That concludes what we're talking about today. Goodbye.